Good morning from Jerusalem. It's December 7. Um, and we are at the old city or next to the old city of Jerusalem. You can see the I love Jerusalem sign and the Hanukkah, the menorah of Hanukkah, which is a uh, Jewish festival holiday that ended two days ago, but we are now very close to Christmas time. Can you see the top of the Christmas tree? <laughs> Here it is. Um, I'm on the way to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre to honor Jim Jackson, who bought the Jerusalem cross. I will take a video of the way and the most important part of the church. I will bless the cross for you and I will send it to your house, of course. I will. Then we are at the Christian quarter outside the wall. This is the walls of Jerusalem. This is the northern wall of the city. And from 1860, um, the habitat, mainly the institute, left the old city. It was too stinky, uh, very expensive to live, very narrow. Then the one who could afford himself to go out uh, were at the beginning, were the institute, for example. This is um, hospital, actually the hospice, a uh, French one, Saint Louis, and um, Dormition, which is one beautiful place to stay in and a wonderful restaurant there. The wall that you see here is from the 16th century, built by Suleiman the Magnificent, on top of the uh, ancient uh, walls. This is the story of Jerusalem, building, destroying, building, destroying, building, destroying. Then it's city on top of a city, on top of a city. This is the new gate. The gate is the last gate that was opened by the Ottomans uh, in the city and the reason was a pressure from the Christians. Um, they were outside the city and they had to walk all the way around to enter the city from Jaffa Gate or Damascus Gate to reach their um, Christian quarter which is inside the city right here. You're actually watching now the Christian quarter and I have to take care of. Uh, then in that case, that was the border between Israel and Jordan until 1967. That side was Israel, and where the light rail you see now, that was the United Nations area, the northern land. And then, inside the wall, it was Jordan. Why not Palestine? Why not Israel? At 1948, United Nations declared of two countries, Israel and Palestine. Just a moment, this is the Terra Santa and the school and the headquarter of the Franciscans. And um, Jerusalem was supposed to be owned by Israel and not by Palestine. It was supposed to be owned by everyone, if you ask me. Good idea. Sadly, 1948, uh, it was conquered by the Jordanian in 1967, the Israelis took it back from them. Look how beautiful it is. It's a French school, and because it's only 7 o'clock in the morning, then most of the shops are closed except of the grocery places. You see the kids go to school. And uh, at night time, it's lit with so many lights, it's so beautiful and I hope that I will be able to show it to you at night time too. Um, it's a little bit cold today, it's only 64 degrees um, Fahrenheit, which is 40 degrees Celsius. This is Hamsa, Hamsa is the symbol of, uh, in a way, peace and luck. And you can sit on top of it and take a job. There are so many uh, coffee places and bars in that street. Beautiful place to visit. Let me show you the Christmas tree again. 
Then Merry Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas to the one who watching my videos. Merry Christmas to the one who uh, um, subscribe my channel, of course, for Jim Jackson. And it's beautiful to see here. That's Ashahar Achadash, which means the new gate. Here it is. And in Arabic, Al Babel Jadid, which is the new gate. But it looks like a more like a monksy. Nice, isn't it? I didn't plan, Jim, to walk through that street today. But there is someone above me that told me to do that. Then I'm doing it. It's going to be a long video, um, but with a lot of information. Ah, let me show you that Santa is not on the North Pole. Santa House is in Jerusalem. Right there. Beautiful, isn't it? You can see the tower of San Salvador um, church, which is the basement of the Franciscans brothers that uh, take care, taking care of all the, or most of the Christian and Catholic uh, places in the Holy Land. And that's why the name of that street is, uh, let me show it to you. Mm -hmm. da -da -da. By the name, the brothers, in a way, in English. Now, inside the Christian quarter, yeah, um, there are a few different neighbors, neighborhoods. Some of them, every neighbor belongs to different kind of Christians. We will take today the. Catholic part, mainly because the Catholic and the Protestant are celebrating Christmas soon. But in Israel and in Jerusalem, oh look at the kitty. Every time that I see cats here, I remember one of you, one of my subscribers, who said, I'm watching the videos with my friend, with my son, waiting to see a cat. And then, uh, we are actually laughing at it. Yeah, it's kind of a private joke. Holy cats chasing holy mice. Then, St. Francis Street. If, you, I'll, if I, I will continue straight. Oh, another, another one is coming. If I'll, I'll continue straight and then left, I will reach the Greek Orthodox um, neighborhood at the Christian Quarter. Um, in Israel, we celebrate three Christmases. Now, it's funny to say, but Israel, it's a Jewish state. The Jews are not celebrating Christmas, but the minority of Israel, which is 2% of, of, the, of the minority are, of the citizens, are Christians. Some of them are Greek Orthodox. Some of them are uh, Protestants, some of them are Copts, um, Catholic, and so on and so on. And because of different calendars, we are celebrating Christmases in different times. And the first one will be the Catholic and the Protestant. This is the entrance to, to the Franciscans. And let me, let me see if the church is open, then we will be able to bless that Jerusalem cross there as well. Nay, but let me be a little bit rude.
came at the right time, Jim. I will try to be quiet now, if it's okay by you. San Francisco's. This is the main church of the Franciscans in Salvador. It's a beautiful one. Advent. We are so close to Christmas. a little bit guilty that that I entered this church but um, he told me to do that I I'm following orders in a way um, how do you know that it's a Catholic place here here you are you can see the uh, Christmas tree already here and Mary the mother is here as well Um, there are no tourists yet in Israel, the, um, the um, gates, the airport gates was, were, were closed um, because of the new variant of COVID. And um, let's talk a little bit about the Jerusalem cross at Buy Me A Coffee. I'm actually letting you to choose between three crosses. A Latin cross, um, 
um, Greek Orthodox cross and uh, Jerusalem cross. Most of you are choosing Jerusalem cross and you do have a good reason for that. I want you to see that picture. This is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre facade and look how many people are there waiting to enter. Um, why I'm showing it to you? Because it might be that I will be the only one there. Oops, did you see the cat? Did you see that cat? The holy cat trying to um, enjoy the holy kittens. The only uh, uh, birds. Pigeons. Oh, that was... I don't know if it was tape, but I hope that it will. That's going to be... That's going to be funny. Then, uh, in that case, uh, the Jerusalem cross is unique to Jerusalem. You can see that the main cross is um, Jerusalem, or Jesus, the center of the word. And the other four, whatever you would choose, four Gospels, altogether five stigmatas, um, everything, fire, whatever you would choose. But the idea is that Jerusalem is in the center. Now the shops are closed here, mainly because there are no tourists, and most of the shops here are for tourists. We will turn right now, and we're still in the Christian water. If you continue straight ahead, we will reach the seven and the eight station of the Via Dorotosa. But I'm heading now to the church. And look how beautiful is this street. Uh, oh, look how sad is that street. Without a tourist, without a shop. Soon, in about a week from now, uh, you will be able to see the Nativity Church, a video that I took. Um, a week ago, two weeks ago, and um, I wanted to upload it to you to show you that there are no tourists, and you will be the you will be the tourist who will watch it. Then please watch it when I will upload it. And did you already subscribe my channel? Yes, thank you. This is one of the gates of the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. The Church of the Holy Sepulcher is the church. Um, the place decided Jesus was crucified, died, buried, and resurrected. Um, sadly, the Muslims um, closed most of the gates. They actually left only one gate for the Christians and built around it so many mosques and uh, Muslim institute. Then, um, then for me, it's a little bit not safe to enter from one gate and you saw that gate had a picture um, but now it's difficult to change it because there's so many status quo between the Christian and themselves and no one will give up uh, his sight for another entrance or exit um, before you will ask me how can it be that the church is in the, inside the city walls? Or are, can, how can it be it's a church, that it's a church? Jesus was crucified at the Golgotha, and it was outside the city. Um, yes, you're right. Jews have been uh, buried outside the city, and the Romans used to crucify people um, at the entrance to the city to show the people what not to do. But the story of Jesus is a story of, good morning, brother, so the Franciscans, a Franciscan monk. The story of the church, oh, the story of Jesus is a story of 2,000 years old. We just left the Christian Quarter Street, the one who's falling in, in a map, and we're entering to St. Helen the one who actually built the church. Then in that matter, um, we do have some evidence that the tomb, um, that there are tomb, Jewish tombs in the 
um, in their church, then it means that it was outside the walls 2,000 years ago. And um, the church was built on top of the site 300 years later. Then in that case, um, it wasn't a church at the time of Jesus. Now, this is Mask of Omar. Omar was one of the Khalif that, according to tradition, reached Jerusalem and entered to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. You must understand that Jesus is uh, very important for the Muslims as well. Uh, Jesus wasn't God or Son of God. According to them, he was a human being and a prophet, but not the last one. The last one was uh, Muhammad. And... Uh, the bishop of Jerusalem, of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, and uh, asked him to pray in the church. But he said, if I pray in the church, the Muslim will turn it into a mosque. And uh, it's better for us to build, uh, to pr uh, better for me to pray out of the church, and here it is. You can see the mosque of Omar, because the Muslims, as he told, as he said, build a mosque next to it. Then that's why there is a mosque in front of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Then in that case, it's a different kind of church. That church belongs to everyone, except of some of the Protestants who believe that that place is not the real tomb. And we do have two tombs of Jesus in Jerusalem. One is outside the walls. It's called a garden tomb. And... The second one is the one that we are heading to. It's the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. I do have videos of that and that. Then if, uh, if you want to see the video of uh, God at the Garden Tomb, um, on top of the video, you will see a link of the Jerusalem videos of 2021. And a few of them will be about the Garden Tomb. As I said, the church is a little bit empty today. It's around 7 o'clock, 7 a.m. in the morning. That, you can see the two main doors. If you remember the, the door, the closed door that you saw, uh, the top of it looks the same. Um, and it looks like the Golden Gate. Um, that's where Jesus enter uh, or will enter to the city and the crusaders who built that facade did the same thing here i think for the same reason uh, you must understand that the golgotha which is a small hill well oh, look at that cat look at the colors of it um the golgotha is a small hill but it's such an important place it's like mount of olives mount sinai but this is the most important place for the Christians. Here, Jesus was crucified, died, buried, and resurrected. Um, because a lot of people didn't like the Christians, that church been destroyed so many times. The Persians were the first one, um, and later on the Muslims. But it was built again and again and again, just like the story of um, the Holy Land. And um, when the Crusaders built a church, they built it as a fortress. Then, then it doesn't look like a regular church. And in it, you will see so many chapels that belongs to so many uh, Christians. We will see the Catholic one. We will see part of the Greek Orthodox. We will see Armenian chapels. Uh, then are you ready for a nice tour? Uh, we will visit today the place that Jesus was crucified. We will build, uh, we will visit the place that he was, uh, they actually um, anointed his body before he uh, was buried, and then, of course, the tomb. Then, Jim, we are climbing up to the Golgotha. We are entering from the um, from, um, Catholic part, 
and we will uh, leave the Golgotha from the uh, Greek Orthodox part. This chapel is where they strip him from his clothes. And here is where they crucified him. This is part of the Via Dolorosa stations. If you don't know what is the Via Dolorosa stations, then uh, According to the Catholic, there are 14 stories that happened from the judgment place to the crucifixion place. Uh, some of them are in the Bible, for example, St. Simon, uh, the crucifixion, the tomb. Some of them are not, and based on ancient stories and ancient traditions. This is not a time to say yes, no, yes, no. Let's accept that people believe in different ways. The mosaic floor is from the 19th century because the church, church was burned down this time by the Christians at 1808. That almost everything is new, except of the ascension of Jesus, which is the oldest mosaic wall from uh, 12th century crusade time. That is where Jesus was nailed to the cross. You can see Mary Magdalene anointing his body. And you can see um, Mary, the mother, above it. How do you know that it's Mary Magdalene? Very easy. The only woman that you can see the hair of her will be Mary Magdalene in Christianity art. And um, when he was in Lazaria at... Uh, uh, Bethany, at the house of St. Lazarus, Mary Magdalene anointed his body with a very expensive perfume. She knew what will happen to Jesus, not the disciples. Um, to, the, to the left, you can see Mary with a cross in her heart. Uh, when she was at the temple, at the presentation at the temple, Saint Simon, a Jewish, uh, um, a Jewish uh, priest from the temple, told her that her son will die in front of her eyes. It will be like a spear will enter to her heart, to your heart, he said. That in that case, this is the Pieta. That is where Mary, holding the dead body of her son, and later on, to the left is the crucifixion. We will talk about the crucifixion soon, but let's first bless those um, Jim, um, Jim Jackson uh, cross. Misery of the mother, the stupid mother, dear De La Rosa. <coughs> the 
This is the crucifixion place. That part belongs to the Greek Orthodox. You can see the crucifixion spot of Jesus. To the right, John the disciple. This is the only disciple without a beard, mainly because he was the young one, the beloved one. To the left, you will see the mother. Well, Jesus uh, was on the cross, just like a Jewish son. He thought about his mother. She knew that if he want, if no one would take care of his mother, she will die. And at that time, most of the women needed support. And um, then he asked, John to take care of his mother. The table that you see there is the um, exact spot of the crucifixion. Here, that's where Jesus was crucified, and there. And there is the two other who actually were crucified with him. The Golgotha is covered with a glass to protect it from um, from uh, from people like me who wants to take some souvenirs. Above it is sin list. Jesus from Nazareth, King of the Jews, in three different languages. Let me bless the cross and you will be able to see it from a few centimeters. We are living now the Greek Orthodox. We are living the Golgotha, the Calvary from the Greek Orthodox part. Let's see how it looks like. And later on, I will climb up with candles to bless someone who asked me to bless his family members next to the crucifixion, please. Then you can see the Golgotha. The Golgotha is um, in Aramite, in Hebrew, the skull, hill, the skull. Um, then in that case, we don't know why. I mean, this is the only source for that name. Maybe, maybe because they crucified so many people that uh, you could find their uh, skeletons and, and skulls. Or maybe the, it was a shape of a skull, the garden tomb. It actually looks like a skull. Then so many question marks. But here you can see the Greek Orthodox version. The skull here and two more there. And you can see that Jerusalem is there. We are outside the city. And after Jesus died, they purified the body of his and some and uh, Joseph of Arimathea, of Arimathea back to get the body of Jesus from Pontius Pilate to bury him before sunset. It's, it's such an important thing in Judaism. Uh, if you die, usually buried you at the same day and the day ends or begins at sunset. 
Then today it's Tuesday at around 4.30, 5 p.m., 1700 hours. It will be already Wednesday in Israel. You can see the mother. And the stone of the anointing. And the place that they put some lithium um, shroud around him is right in front of you. And it's um, full with oil, and I'm gonna anoint that cross here. And for me, it's such an important place because this is the, the, the place that the naked body of Jesus actually laid. Um, it belongs to the Armenian, to the Catholic, and the Greek Orthodox. Let's go to the tomb. I cannot go to the tomb uh, with a camera, or at least I have to get uh, to ask for per a per uh, permission. Um, maybe because I'm alone, they will let me do that, but I'm not sure. But anyhow, Jim, I'm gonna bless it uh, after that video. Then it will be in the tomb as well. Usually there's a line queue of hundreds here, uh, but sadly I'm the only one. Now, the tomb is supposed to be a cave, rock-cut cave of Joseph of Arimathea. The, you, can see, you can see it here, but in reality, what you will see is a decola, it's, it's a chapel that they built here. Um, that chapel has been destroyed a few times as well. Look at beautiful how the light now. Um, it, uh, the tomb has been destroyed so many times, then in that case. Um, um, then it doesn't look like a cave. And let me ask a permit to go in, then please wait for me. Jim, one priest say yes, one priest say no. Then I have that, that it will be okay. There are two chapels. The first chapel is the chapel of the angels who took care that no one will steal the body of Christ. And you can see the holy fire. The inner part is the tomb itself. Let me pray for you, Jim, and for all my subscribers and all the viewers who are watching my video. This is this is usually happens to me only once in a million years, and that's when because there's no one here in the church. Then thanks go to the Greek Orthodox monk. He's one of them. <laughs> Wow, maybe the best way to do is to be here early, early morning. Then the Adicola was built at the 19th century after it had been destroyed by the Christians. And later on, a few years ago, they renovated it because it almost collapsed. Think of me as now, or think of you now as Mary Magdalene, reaching the place to anoint the body of Jesus. Hmm. 
then, Jim, this is the end of our video. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I hope that the viewers enjoyed it too. Um, we will see each other at the next video. From right now, you are part of my family, Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The beginning of December 2021.